Hello, thoughtful viewers, and welcome to today's Healthy Living. On this edition, we'll meet Dr. John McDougall, a renowned physician and nutrition expert from the USA. Dr. McDougall has dedicated his life to the study of diet and well-being and has worked to improve public health for over 30 years. He believes people can enjoy long, healthy lives by following a starch-centered diet free of animal products and that this way of eating can help us avoid or reverse chronic medical conditions such as heart disease and diabetes. Thus far, Dr. McDougall has written 11 best-selling books including McDougall's Medicine, A Challenging Second Opinion and The McDougall Program for a Healthy Heart. Let us now hear how a sugar plantation in Hawaii, USA vastly changed the good doctor's entire perspective on medicine. I started out as a traditional doctor. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got traditional training at uh, Michigan State University between 1968 and 1972. Then I got a job on a sugar plantation on the Big Island of Hawaii. My job was to take care of 5,000 people. It put me in a unique situation, and uh, the three years that I was a plantation doctor, I came to the realization that I was a terrible doctor. And the reason I thought I was a terrible doctor is because the tools that I used to help my patients, primarily drugs and some surgeries, didn't result in healthier people. It just resulted in a lot of sick people with a lot of medication. So I had to come to the conclusion that the problem was mine. So that's one of the important things I learned as a plantation doctor was that uh, what I was doing didn't work. And the second thing I had a chance to learn was uh, what the cause of disease is. Well, I had a unique opportunity. Big Island of Hawaii, taking care of plantation workers. They were first, second, third, and fourth generation Filipinos, Japanese, Chinese, and Koreans. And so I had these four generations of people eating differently. First generation living on rice and vegetables and very little meat and no dairy. And the kids got a little more westernized, grandkids fully westernized, and so on. Same genes, basically the same environment. The only thing that changed was the food. And so my first generation patients were always trim, hardworking, lived into their 80s and 90s, never had diabetes, never had breast cancer, prostate cancer, heart attacks. Strong, hearty, healthy people living on a diet that I thought then was marginal at best and probably deficient because it didn't have all the meat and dairy that I was taught you had to have. But there it was right before my eyes. All these healthy people eating, quote, a terrible diet. And as they started to eat a better diet, as they passed on in the generations, more well-balanced. What I found is people got fatter and sicker. They started getting the heart disease and the arthritis and the diabetes. This was uh, 1976 that I finally left the plantation. I knew that diet caused disease. And I knew there was a possibility for people to stay healthy living on a diet primarily of starches, rice like in this case. And it wasn't inevitable you had to get sick, which is what I've been taught. And I believed. Dr. McDougall then returned to the U.S. mainland and began in-depth research on the relationship between diet and disease. I went back into training. I went back to come, become an internist, and then I got into the academics of all of this. I started reading the science on diet and disease. And what I discovered was that I wasn't the first one that made these observations that foods make people sick, rich foods, foods for kings and queens the American diet that made people sick. I mean, there were thousands of researchers that made the same observation, but they took it a step further. They said, not only did these foods cause people to be sick, but if you stop feeding them the food, they got well. And so I saw where my mentors, people from a decade or five or even a hundred years before, cured people of serious diseases, kidney disease, arthritis, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cured them just by changing their diet. Published in the scientific literature without argument from anybody else because it's true. I got real passionate about this. I got really excited about this kind of medicine. Based on his years of study, the good doctor believes that a starch-centered diet free of animal products is best. The general diet. There is a diet for people. Uh, there are some modifications that I make in, in individuals, but there is a general diet for people, just like if you have animals at home that you care for. You know what your horse eats. 
You know what your dog eats. You know what your parrot eats. You know what your cat eats. Every other animal has a diet. Why wouldn't a human being have a diet? There has to be a diet that allows people to look, feel, and function their best. When we return, Dr. McDougall will further explain his views on nutrition and healthy eating. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living here on Supreme Master Television. Today we are talking with Dr. John McDougall, a respected physician and nutrition expert from the USA, about his perspectives on the best diet for humanity. We are starch eaters. Every population, every successful population that has ever walked this earth has been a starch eater. Let me give you some examples. Uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs were known as the people of the corn, right? They lived on corn. Uh, the Incas, as the other people in the Andes, lived on potatoes. There are f over 400 species of potatoes uh, in that region of the world. Uh, people in uh, the Middle East lived on uh, barley and, and uh, other types of grains. The most obvious example is the people in the Far East. They lived primarily on rice. Now, there are some other foods that they ate, sweet potatoes and so on, but primarily rice. And so if you look at all successful populations of people that ever walked this earth, they all lived on starch-based diets. And I could go into the genetic aspects of this too. The genes that we have prove we're starch eaters. Fish consumption has many adverse effects on the human body as well as on the ecosystem. The idea that fish is health food is very unkind to fish. We've almost destroyed, beyond recovery, our oceans. We've virtually decimated the oceans. Sharks, tuna fishes, everything. Gone. And again, to the point where it may not be able to recover. This idea that fish is good for protein or good fish oils is, is not true. Fish is a muscle of an animal just like a cow or a pig, it's just a muscle of an animal, it consists of fat and protein, no carbohydrate, no dietary fiber. It's high on the food chain, so it's heavily contaminated with environmental contaminants. Uh, this protein is very acidic. It will take and wipe out your bones, give you osteoporosis and kidney stones. It's far more protein than anybody would ever need. You can't possibly miss getting enough protein living on a starch-based diet. It suppresses the immune system and encourages cancer and infections. So there's a real downside to eating all these fish. Dairy products are also not fit for human consumption. If I have one thing to eliminate from the Western diet, it would be cow's milk. Because cow's milk to me is basically liquid meat. It has the same composition as a beefsteak, cheese does. So you're dealing with high fat, high cholesterol, a high protein, highly contaminated food, which is ideal for a baby cow if it was clean which is not anymore. It's uh, contaminated, infected with bovine leukemia, bovine AIDS viruses, listeria, all kinds of pathogens. Uh, bad cow, E. coli, it's the dirty, dirty, dirty stuff. And uh, then you've got the environmental contaminants such as DDT and heptachlor and all kinds of things, PCBs. In addition to having the problems of, of heart disease and cancer and diabetes and obesity that you'd have with a high meat diet, it also has a problem of the proteins being highly allergic. So it's the number one cause of food allergy. It causes serious food allergies uh, in people such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, and it's probably involved in multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune diseases. So that's, there's a huge amount of research on type 1 diabetes and cow's milk protein. Uh, that's a devastating disease for any family. When I tell you these things, I have to say, you must realize what I'm saying is the majority opinion. That's what the science says. It is Dr. McDougall's dream that information regarding how diet and health are intimately connected be spread as wide as possible, not only for the sake of public health, but also for the protection of our precious environment. You see, we have this road out there that's really sad. We have this road out there that 
that we're marching along as a civilization. On one side of this road uh, marches the destruction of the human body <clears throat> to the point where we have 6.8 billion people on the planet. About 1.1 billion are overweight or obese. Uh, 1.1 billion have hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease are rampant. So we have the, the progressive destruction of the human population on this one side of this road. Along the other side of the same road, we have the progressive destruction of the planet Earth. One U-turn to a starch-based diet, both of these problems you reverse. That's what has to be done. It's a simple message. There's nothing complicated about this. It's one big solution, and that is a starch-based diet. And once people get it, everything's going to work. We'd like to thank Dr. McDougall for sharing his wisdom on nutrition and its relation to well-being and for promoting a diet free of animal products. Next week on part two of our program, Dr. McDougall will further share his vast knowledge of diet and on keeping well with us. For more information about Dr. John McDougall, please visit www.drmcdougall.com. Books and DVDs by Dr. McDougall are also available at the same website. Thoughtful viewers, thank you for your kind company on today's episode of Healthy Living. Up next is Science and Spirituality after Noteworthy News. May we all be embraced by Heaven's love and light forever. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.